Hi, this is Stu and welcome to the Asana School at Purple Valley. And what we're going to look at today is Pajvakanasana and Paravita Pajvakanasana. We'll do those two together, I think. So, first of all, um, we would have done Trikanasana, Paravita Trikanasana first, and now we're back at the front and now we're stop stepping out. So, Carolina will take a step out. And this is a longer step than it would have been for Trikanasana, okay? So you really want to create some length because then what we want to try and aim to do, again, and this is a strength thing really, is trying to get this front thigh parallel to the ground, yeah? Okay, if you're new to things, then, then keep it up, but as you start to work, then try and get this uh, hip down, yeah? And from there, traditionally, we would as an easy step, you know, being prompted by Carolina here, you can place your uh, elbow on your knee, yeah? And then you might reach over the side, okay? So what we're thinking in all of these variations, really, it doesn't matter so much what's happening here, it's we're creating a line of energy from our foot, which is nicely grounded on the floor, so if it tends to lift up here, we want to be pressing down on the outside of our foot, all the way up the body, all the way up the side, all the way to, to the hand, yeah? So it's like a whole lateral line of the body, yeah? And you really want to feel the whole body in going in the two directions, grounding into the floor and lifting to the sky, yeah? And you can really feel the whole body working in that position. And if you're arm is actually on your thigh, there's a tendency to just hang out, yeah, and to let all your weight sink down into this elbow and into this thigh. So what you want to be doing if you're doing this is to actually try and lift your elbow slightly off of your thigh. So it's just resting but not resting, yeah? Right, and then that will free up the shoulders a little bit more too. Okay, so from there we can go a little bit have a little rest by the looks of it, and then we we'll go down again. So from there, if we want to the next step to the posture, it would be to place the hand on the inside, yeah? So the finished posture would be the hand on the outside, yeah? But the hand on the inside is a nice sort of halfway step. Again, we're creating as much opening in the chest as we can, and then reaching over and about there. So what we're talking about is a nice line from foot to hand, yeah? And then again with the head, you don't want to let it tip back too much, so you want to keep the chin towards your chest a little bit and then just rotate the head. And so we don't want to, we may want to look at the hand with our eyes, yeah? But we don't want to look with our head, because if we look with our head, we tip our head back, which is not so nice for our head. It puts more strain on it, because it's heavy enough as it is. So just keep your chin a little bit tucked and just turn your head and look with your eyes, yeah? Or look under your armpit up this way, yeah? You can inspect, see if you've waxed mm -hmm. nicely enough, yeah? As you saw from mine, you know, it would take a, a gallon of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then coming up, yes. And we'll try the last uh, effort and we'll keep on this side even though we're torturing Carolina a little bit. And so just to show you on this one that really then we're stepping through and then the hand would be on the outside, yeah, and then rotating there and we land up in the same position. So you can see from those three different efforts that really we've just created the same sort of shape on the outside. So that's why it's more important to get your body comfy on this side rather than the whole body being pulled this way, yeah, and then you can't really open up enough. So better to change the arm at the front so that you can open up your body on the side, yeah? Good. And the same thing, make sure you're pressing into both lots of feet evenly, trying to shift your weight between the two and lifting up on the inner thigh here so the weight isn't pressing down on the knee here, yeah? So always lifting up here. That will be mostly activated by lifting the arch of the back foot, pressing down on the outside of the back foot, yeah? And that's about all I've got to say on this one. And we're going to move straight into Paravrita Trikonasana. So we're going to do it this way around, and we'll go straight from here. So this is a twist, obviously. Um, and again, we'll start with prayer twist, okay? So the first 
steps are, what are we doing with our feet? Well, we'll talk about the feet as they would like them, shall we say. Front foot pointing forward, back foot is going to, when you come up, is going to be at about 45 degrees, yeah? And we'll talk about why we might choose to change that foot in a sec. So we'll start with you with your foot in that position and with a prayer twist, yeah? Uh, no, like coming up, with your foot on 45 degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So alignment is roughly heel to heel, yeah. Outside of the back foot pressing down, yeah. Carolina is trying as much as she can to square her hips and then at the same time creating a twist with the upper body, coming again from the thoracic spine, yeah. Now actually, this places quite a bit of stress around here with that foot in that externally rotated position, which is why I say we'll come to it next, which is to pivot that foot back up onto the toes, yeah, and bring it right the way around, yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. And then lifting up. Now, you see how much nicer that is from her hips? Maybe you'll get a good view from this camera looking this way. Um, what you need to do is keep the heel pressing back, yeah, and the whole back leg engaged, because what it tends to do is it can bend and sag a little bit. So you really want to keep the whole back leg engaged. And then we want to be twisting here at the front. Now, whenever we have something to push against, the chances are that we can just push and not really engage those muscles that actually cause us to rotate. So although our elbow is there, we want to make sure that we're using our obliques, which are the muscles that rotate us, to rotate as much as possible, yeah? So, and then just give it a little bit of a help with the elbow on the, ins on the outside of the knee, rather than just plonk it there, crank us round, yeah? So just use your own muscles, activate the body as much as possible, yeah? So Carolina, after her little rest, is going to re-enter the posture. <laughs> And do you want to take us down and show us what that posture would look like if we then placed your hand down on the floor? Are you warm enough for that? Mm -hmm. So the chances are if we can, you can probably see from the front camera that Carolina's knee has moved towards the center line. So the terminology anatomy wise is it's been adducted from its normal position. Yeah? Now some people might find that that pinches their hip yeah? In which case, if it's pinching, don't do it. You'll have to keep it a little bit wider. But if it can come towards the center line, then you're going to find that you can actually get past it and get the arm on the outside of the knee much more easily. What you don't want to happen is your knee to travel across the center line relative to your foot. So you're going to be pushing out with your knee and in with your arm. And that's going to create the twist, but all the time, again, working on your body to create that twist. Yeah. From here, if she wants to make it even nicer, the same thing again, she could come back up onto the top of her back leg. Yeah, back foot. Really push with the heel more. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Yeah, and then you could lift that hip a little bit more and drop that one a bit more. Yeah? So it could be like that also. So we can have lots of different combinations here, yeah? The one thing I would say is one of the things you see a lot is this here. With, we want to have our hand on the floor, so, but we can't really get it past here. So what do we do instead? We sort of skimmy around the front of the knee and we place it sort of like this. So the arm is sort of crossing in front of the leg. Well, you know, to me, you're escaping out of the posture. The posture is a twist, you know, and it would be better to do your prayer twist and have some rotation going on than to place it here and don't have so much rotation going on. So don't be too eager to go for the hand on the floor. My idea of it is, and it's easier for me to forget the back leg and I can show it more easily. My idea is that once you can get a really good prayer twist, then you can find that your arm is actually running down the outside of your leg. And then all you have to do is straighten your arm and place your hand on the floor. Quite a trouble breathing there for a minute. <laughs> All you have to do is that, yeah, it's not quite all, it's a little bit harder than you might think. So if you can feel the top of your arm against running down that side of your leg, then it's much easier just to place your hand on the floor. 
that means you've got the rotation in place in order to do the posture. So take it in steps, be kind to the body, think about your pelvis. If you're really feeling a bit of a nasty talking at the pelvis with that back foot in that 45 degree angle, just come up onto the ball of your foot, yeah? So much nicer, yeah? And we'll revisit that again, same sort of thing when we look at Virabhadrasana, warrior posture, exactly the same sort of thing. It's not the classic shape, but it's much nicer for the body, yeah? I'll leave you with that and uh, see you again soon.